ChatGPT is a wonderful tool for a multitude of different use cases, from generating knowledge to creating content, diagnosing issues with ChatGPT vision, to even creating pictures in ChatGPT from a single prompt using Dolly 3. Now these are all wonderful features, but the one feature that might be the most powerful that people often look over is ChatGPT's ability to actually analyze data. Now this is super powerful, and if you aren't utilizing it to its full potential, then you are not using ChatGPT in the correct way. You have the ability to become a data analyst in ChatGPT, analyze data, clean data, interpret data, and everything in between. And that's why I'm creating this full data analysis guide for ChatGPT. Let's get into it. Before we get into this video, if you want to learn ChatGPT in depth and learn how to utilize it to its maximum potential, I highly recommend joining my ChatGPT mastery course and community. Now this is all in the same platform. As you can see, this is the community aspect. It's very cool. We can start these long conversation threads going over ChatGPT's new features, making sure that we're staying on top of this AI revolution, right? We are in here learning a tool of the future. And if we head up to the classroom, as you can see, we have all sorts of modules in here from this new GPT feature where I show you how to create awesome GPTs that sell to the advanced data analysis feature in chat GPT, where I show you in depth cleaning and interpreting data like I'm about to show you in this video. This goes a little bit more in depth and it will show you some unique use cases for this feature. Now let's get back into the video. Now, in my opinion, data analysis comes down to three things, all of which chat GPT has the ability to complete interpreting, cleaning, and analyzing. So having ChatGPT actually inspect and interpret the data to gain a full understanding of what it's dealing with is going to be very important. Also, ChatGPT has the ability to clean your data, which when your data is cleaned, it's going to be a little bit more functional and ChatGPT will be able to analyze that data much better once we get onto the last step, which is analyzing. And analyzing gives you insider information on what your data means. It can help you find trends, find outliers to see what's working and why it's working, or find different key metrics that are going to be very important for success. Now I will run through this entire cycle of data analysis that I just shared with you, but I want you to follow along with me. And you may be thinking, well, I don't have any data sets. Well, that's where you can go to this free data set website called Kaggle. Now Kaggle is this website where you can explore different data sets and you can just download them to your computer in order to practice on. Uh, this video is not sponsored by Kaggle at all. I don't have any affiliation with Kaggle. It's just a very good way to access a bunch of data sets that you can download to your computer in order to practice on ChatGPT. So I highly recommend it. The data set that I'm going to be working with today is a jobs and data science data set. So this is the raw format of the CSV file that I imported into Google Sheets from Kaggle. So I downloaded it from Kaggle and then I imported it into a Google Sheet and this is what it looked like. It gives me a bunch of data that I get to practice on in ChatGPT. So this is very fun. Uh, don't be limited by your data because you have websites like Kaggle that have a bunch of data sets that allow you to share quality data and actually access that quality data. So this is what we are going to be using for this video. I thought it would be fitting using the jobs and data science data set. So in order to activate this data analysis feature, all you need to do is have GPT-4 activated. As you can see, when you have this activated, it activates DALI, browsing, and analysis all at the same time. So you no longer need to go in the back end in the beta features and select activate because if you just have GPT-4 activated, it will automatically be activated as well. And in order to upload a file, all you need to do is hit this link button in the bottom left-hand corner of your prompt bar. So that's what I'm going to do. And then it will take you to your desktop or your last opened folder. And for this, I'm going to select jobs in data. That's my CSV file that I had in the Google Sheets that I showed you a little earlier. So I'm going to select open. And as you can see at the bottom here, it just loaded in that data set very, very quickly. And this is a CSV file. You have the option to upload numerous types of files. I'm going to use my course here as a reference and go to activation and use cases. These are some of the files that you get access to upload to ChatGPT. So there's text files, programming source files, office documents, PDF files, image files, data files, audio files, and archive files. So you can upload a multitude of different files to ChatGPT in order to get them analyzed. As you can see here, we have the jobs in data science CSV. And the first thing we need to do is actually interpret this data or have ChatGPT interpret this data. That way it can get a good understanding of what it's dealing with. When ChatGPT has that understanding, it can better clean and analyze the data. So I'm going to type out a simple prompt. 
So I told ChatGPT, interpret this data. And when you have all aspects understood, say, I am ready for the next step. So I'm giving ChatGPT a command to say, once it's actually interpreted and understood all of what's included within this data, I can then send off this message and ChatGPT will start interpreting the data using this analyzing feature, which is very cool and very powerful. I'm serious, if you ladies and gentlemen aren't using this yet, I highly recommend getting involved because this is a very powerful way that we can actually interpret, understand, and analyze our data. So ChatGPT did its interpreting and it now understands all of the columns and all of what they mean. And it's also saying the activation command, I am ready for the next step, as I told it to say, once it's understood all the data. So there haven't been any follow-up questions. So it seems like ChatGPT has a good grasp on everything that's included within this specific data set. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have ChatGPT clean this data because in order for it to be properly analyzed, it must be cleaned and ready to go. So if there's anything that needs to be fixed or any numbers that need to be classified as not a number or NAN, then it's going to be important to have ChatGPT clean that data. And I'm going to show you the data sets next to each other once ChatGPT has the cleaned data. So I'll show you this non-cleaned version versus the cleaned version after ChatGPT is done cleaning, if there are any changes that need to be made. Now, there might not be, but it's important to take this step in order to let ChatGPT clean the data because later on it will be much easier to analyze the data if it's been cleaned to ChatGPT's liking. So I can type out a simple prompt like clean this data if there is anything that needs to be done for better analysis in the future. Okay, I can send that off and ChatGPT will now clean the data using the analyzing feature once again. So there was actually something that needs to be cleaned. It says, the data has been cleaned by removing duplicate rows, which ensures better accuracy and quality for future analysis. There were no missing values in this data set, so that's good. The cleaned data is now saved in a new file, which you can download using the link cleaned jobs in data CSV. And then it says there are no remaining duplicates in the cleaned data set, making it ready for further analysis, which is amazing. And this is what I love about using ChatGPT is it gives you downloadable copies. All I have to do is hit this link and it will download the file. As you can see up by my face right here, it's downloaded this to my computer. So now I'm going to head back over to my Google Sheet. I'm going to create a new sheet and then I'm going to hit file, import, and then I'm going to make sure I'm in upload and I'm going to drag in my data set right here. And I'm just going to say replace current sheet and import data. And let's see if there's any differences within the two. It said that it just removed some duplicate rows. So I'm assuming that there isn't going to be much differences. But if you're dealing with a really messy data set and there's a lot of things missing or there's a lot of empty values or there's a lot of values that need to be filled in, then ChatGPT can take on that responsibility and better clean the data. But this was a pretty clean sheet of data, pretty much ready for use. Now that this data has been interpreted and cleaned, it's ready for analysis. ChatGPT has a full understanding of what it's dealing with and also a clean copy of that data. So now it's time to get into the analysis section of this protocol. Now I'm telling you this, when you accurately learn how to analyze your data, it becomes so powerful because you have the ability to find anomalies within your data, identify trends, correlations, relationships, and eventually even dive into some predictive modeling with ChatGPT. You can do all of this. Now this would have taken a long time to understand and learn without ChatGPT, but now we have the ability to prompt to a chatbot and tell it what we want completed, and that does the data analysis for us. It lays it out in a nice, easy to understand format, especially when combined with all the other prompting techniques that I've taught in my course and other YouTube videos. You have the ability to become a data analyst in a sense, and it's so powerful. So within this same chat thread, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask ChatGPT some questions and I'm going to start the analysis process. I'm going to say, are there any trends within this data set? And if you aren't being super specific, it may ask you questions like, what do you want to see trends for? Uh, job types based on year, salaries based on the year. You know, there are so many things that you can draw trends for. So it might ask you some follow-up questions, but that's also why I like this is you can be a complete beginner, ask basic questions like this, and ChatGPT will help guide you through that process. But I'm just going to send off this basic prompt, nothing too complex. I want to make this beginner friendly so everybody can understand how to use this. So I'm going to send off that message and ChatGPT is going to be analyzing this data. You can open this up and actually see what it's doing in the back end. I like to keep it shut because that stuff starts to confuse me a little bit. And when you look at this, ChatGPT, without me asking, gave four different graphs and charts showing me the different trends. 
And not only that, but it gives me an analysis of the trends and tells me and describes what each graph is meaning. Salary trends by job category, salary trends by experience level, salary distribution by employment type, and number of jobs by company size. And it kind of dives into what each one of these graphs are saying. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up top here and I'm going to zoom in so you can get a better look at this graph. This is just amazing that ChatGPT created all of this in about 15 seconds. A beautiful box plot, color-coded, labeled, everything we need, x-axis, y-axis, right? That's about the extent that I learned about analysis and graphs. But this is salary trends by job category. But you can start to analyze this data and see different outliers within this box plot. You can scroll down and see salary trends by experience level. And as you can see, I'm already drawing some conclusions here. It seems like the mid-level experience level people uh, has the highest amount of earning potential right there. So as you can see, salary in USD, this person who only has mid-level experience is earning over $400,000 per year, nearly $500,000 per year, compared to all of the senior levels who are earning in between $320,000 and $420,000. If right now what I'm drawing is, it seems like the senior level people are much more consistent while the mid-level people range much more. Then as we keep scrolling down, we have another graph. Salary distribution by employment type. That's kind of interesting to look at. And then lastly, we have number of jobs by company size. So as you can see, medium company sizes have a lot more jobs than large company sizes or small company sizes. So that medium company size is that sweet spot for jobs and data science. And again, if you do not understand any of these, you can have ChatGPT walk you through what they mean. So I can ask ChatGPT a question like, explain more in depth salary trends by job so I can understand that box plot better. You can talk to ChatGPT like a five-year-old and get very advanced analysis on a lot of your data. I'm going to send off that message, and this is why I like ChatGPT. You can talk to it like a human, natural language processing. You have the ability to analyze data when you're talking in this not fancy verbiage. You don't really have to understand anything. ChatGPT can walk you through that process very simply. As you can see, it gives me a four-step in-depth description of how these box plots are working, and it actually helps me understand it much better. If you want to pause the screen and read it, it'd probably help you understand it a little bit better as well if you don't have much knowledge on it. Then you can keep on analyzing this data. I say, generate me a radar chart of number of jobs by company size. I can send off that message, and ChatGPT will get me a radar chart based off this graph right here. If you want to see data in different ways, you can just ask ChatGPT. You can even ask ChatGPT for ideas on how to analyze this data, and it will give you that as well. As you can see, this radar chart is great at finding outliers. As you can see, there's a huge spike towards medium, and the spikes towards large companies and small companies are minuscule. So when you have a ton of data and you start overlaying these radar charts on top of each other, they become super powerful. And again, I go in-depth on radar charts in my ChatGPT Mastery course, I think radar charts might be one of my favorite charts for finding outliers. So this has been a full tutorial on data analysis in ChatGPT. With the steps that I've taught you in this video, you can analyze any data set, big or small. I recommend practicing using the website Kaggle.com in order to find and explore on different data sets. That way you have the ability to use ChatGPT for advanced data analysis because once the opportunity comes or once the time comes where you need to actually analyze data, you will be prepared. If you want to learn ChatGPT in depth, A to Z, and join a thriving community of AI enthusiasts, I highly, highly recommend joining my ChatGPT Mastery course, which I will be leaving in the description or the top pinned comment. Now you can just scroll down to the comment section, and once you see my top pinned comment up there, you can click on that link and start learning ChatGPT in depth and maximizing its potential. With that being said, I also have a lot of free content here on YouTube that you can learn and enjoy. So drop a like on this video if you did enjoy it. Comment below letting me know your feedback on what are you using this advanced data analysis feature for and how can I improve on the workflow as well. I would love to hear it. Subscribe if you're new. And with that being said, I will see you within the next video.